Hello everyone, it's Marie, and today I thought I would make this video talking about freelancer websites such as Upwork. So here are just seven reasons why I have stopped using it. I also quickly want to put out there that I have only been working as a freelancer for three months. If you've been following my journey, you'll know all the different things that I've tried and failed at, and you'll know that I don't claim to be an expert, and that there are people out on YouTube who have amazingly informational videos on Upwork and there are people that have been using it for like two or three years and they have great experiences so watch their videos if you want to hear a more expert opinion this is just why I as someone who's new to the world of freelancing have stopped using it so the number one reason is the inconsistency um, for me I just was not getting enough work on Upwork and it wasn't for lack of trying I would apply to a lot of jobs I'm talking sometimes I would spend an entire day from like 10 a.m. till like 5 p.m. applying for jobs, filling out proposals, tailoring CVs, writing cover letters and I would still get nothing back. Sometimes I'd apply for 20, 30, 40 jobs a day and I'm not talking just quickly applying and not putting time into it, I put hours and hours of my time into each individual job. I'd research the company, I'd work really hard on my proposals and I still wouldn't get any calls back. So for me it was just so inconsistent. I know that a lot of you are probably looking at me thinking, come on, you've only been doing it like three months, of course you're not going to get amazing consistency in the first three months and I, I know that and I'm not expecting things to come easy to me, I know that it's hard. I know that it's really hard to be a freelancer and to get your name out there and to get established. But at the same time, I still need to pay my rent and bills. So obviously, I have started seeking out other work, such as my long-term virtual assisting contracts and my online teaching work, which is consistent for income. And that kind of brings me on to the second point. It was just very time-consuming. As I said, sometimes I would spend an entire day applying to jobs, and I'd get absolutely no interviews, no callbacks, nothing. And I also found that the jobs were very time-consuming and that a lot of the time, the people wanted you to do a lot of work for not a lot of pay. That leads me on to um, point number three. It was very low pay and very high expectations, and I am sure that that's not the case for all clients on Upwork, but as someone who was kind of a beginner and not so experienced, I found that that was the kind of clients that was seeking out me. I experimented a lot with my job applications. I applied to some jobs which were asking for 8 to $10 an hour, and I applied for other jobs where I was asking for... 15, 20, 25 dollars an hour, I really experimented and I was always honest with what my experience was and I was always honest about what skills I could offer. I didn't want to come across as somebody who was too inexperienced, which is why I didn't want to always price myself too low. So I really did try to balance it out. Sometimes I'd apply for very low jobs, sometimes very high jobs, and I still found that the only people that got back to me were the people that were willing to pay very little. To give you a couple of examples, I did quite a few video editing jobs where I'd get paid, say, £40 for the video, and bear in mind, after Upwork fees, you get about £30 from that, and this video would take me about five days to edit because the people would keep coming back to me with changes to make every five seconds. So they would be like, oh yeah, it's great, but I'd like you to change this, I'd like you to change this, and then they'd send me different music and they'd send me different clips, and they'd ask me to just keep making lots of changes. But because it was a fixed rate contract, I couldn't charge anything extra on top of that, and they weren't willing to pay anything extra. So I found that the targets and deadlines and goals for me to complete were very up in the air and they just kept coming back with more work for me and it was just not worth it because I was getting like 30 pounds for like four days of work and it just wasn't it wasn't enough same with the hourly contract so there was one job I applied for as a virtual assistant this company was based in England so they understand the living wage in England and they knew that I was from England as well so I applied for a job and I asked for ten dollars an hour after Upwork fees you get eight dollars an hour converted to UK money that is below minimum wage in the UK it's below minimum wage. I obviously don't like to work for less than minimum wage and they got back to me a day later saying we really love your experience and your skills, we love that you're not living far from us so we can you know speak to you on the phone and we can have you work with us on a more personal level, we'd love to hire you but the problem is we've been having people apply for this job who are willing to be paid only two to three dollars per hour. Um, is there any way that you can compete with them and lower your price to similar to those? And obviously I said no, because there's no way I can work for $3 an hour. First of all, my time is more valuable than $3 an hour. And secondly, it's a below minimum wage, and I just don't think that's right. I think that it's going to undersell other freelancers if I accept jobs for too low, because, you know, when you start going low, then you're undervaluing the whole industry, and then companies expect everyone to work for that low, and it's just not, it's not 
at all realistic to ask somebody to work for three dollars an hour um, and I understand that's something that will always happen with working online they're always going to sometimes outsource to lower income countries I have absolutely no problem with that but um, it is a struggle when you're living in a country that costs a lot to live in and um, somebody who's trying to hire you is from that country too you'd think they would understand the living expense of your country when they're in it themselves I wasn't able to get any jobs that were paying a fair wage because I guess they just went for the people who were much more experienced than me it was a real struggle and I understand that I need to get my experience up before I can apply for the higher wage jobs but at the same time unfortunately I'm not asking for a lot of money I was only asking for minimum wage so I can't go any lower than that unfortunately <laughs> another thing that I really found a struggle with Upwork was the fixed rate jobs so as I said I did a few virtual assistant jobs that were hourly contracts and I loved the hourly contracts because it meant I got paid for what I did so I have one hourly contract set up to ten dollars an hour as I said it's still very low pay but at least I know that if I do seven hours worth of work I'm gonna get paid seven hours worth of pay whereas when I do a fixed rate job as someone who is inexperienced I cannot always guarantee that I'm gonna get it done in the amount of time I'm being paid for and if it does take you a lot longer or if as I said previously the company comes to you and asks for more and more and more and more changes on top of that you're not gonna get paid for any of the extra time so that was something I really struggled with I think that fixed rate jobs are great for those people who are more experienced and can whiz through a job really quickly get it done to a great standard and get paid a good amount of money. I do think in the future there's something I would definitely consider doing again but right now it just wasn't wasn't right for me. The fifth thing that really got to me was sometimes I wasn't even paid. So there was one time I spent like four days editing a video for a company and they didn't even pay me for it so I, I finished the video, I sent the finished product to them and then they decided that they didn't want to pay me anymore because they wanted to go with somebody else instead but they'd already asked me to do the job and I'd already finished it and I'd already sent them the finished product and they didn't pay me for it because they didn't want my services anymore but I'd already done it so surely they should have paid me anyway um, I filed a dispute with Upwork and they didn't they actually rejected my dispute so that means that Upwork sided with the client I wasn't able to ask Upwork why they didn't accept my dispute so that was a bit of a struggle I'm still kinda of looking into what to do about that but I feel like it's not worth taking any further because as I said it was a load paid job anyway I'd spent like three days editing a video and the pay was only supposed to be like 40 pounds or something so it wasn't a lot of money but it's just annoying it's the principle of the fact that I edited this video for somebody and I didn't get paid for it. And the next thing isn't a huge deal but it is something that kind of adds to it the fees on Upwork are really high. Um, I mean they're not too bad I understand Upwork are offering a service and just like all websites they take their cuts that's fine with me, I really don't mind. After a while it does all add up, especially when, you know, I was doing a contract for $10 an hour and then they take fees off me, so I ended up only getting $8 an hour. I get charged like transaction fees and tax fees as well and eventually I would get a very, very low amount after that. It wasn't the hugest deal, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to pay some sort of fees on Upwork, but at the same time they just seemed like a lot, especially when you're not getting much anyway. It really does add up, so that was just another thing that kind of put me off using the platform, but it's definitely not a absolute big issue, I'd definitely still be happy to pay those fees if I was to get consistent work on there but unfortunately it just wasn't working out. And the last thing is just that there was a lot of competition, too much competition in fact. Um, you know you'd apply for a job and you'd be competing against a lot of people like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 other freelancers you compete against and as I said a lot of them were charging three dollars an hour, how do you even compete against that? I don't know. Um, especially on the website Freelancer I didn't get one job on that website and on that one it shows you how many bids have been put in sometimes it would say like 150, 200 people have also bidded on that job I mean you're competing with people from all around the world obviously I just wasn't able to compete with all that amount of people and so I really did struggle so yeah they're just the reasons why I've stopped using it I hope this didn't seem like a negative video I really wouldn't, I'm not trying to rant about Upwork I'm not trying to say it's bad I think it's really great and as I said in my first month I did get quite a few jobs on there and my kind of rating on Upwork has definitely been going up um, and I found that as my rating goes up I am getting more jobs so it's definitely one of those things you just have to keep working at once I have definitely figured out what service I want to offer people and once I have trained more in that area got more experience and qualifications and I'm a better competitor um, and I can charge prices that are fair to me and also fair to the client because I'm experienced enough to charge those prices I'll definitely probably go back to Upwork and other freelancer platforms but right now as somebody inexperienced and 
as somebody who needs consistent income from the start. For me, it was just something that I had to take a break from temporarily. As I said, there are some things I still use at work for, such as my virtual assistant jobs. I am still contracted in an hourly contract to somebody on there. So I am still using it and I am still keeping my rating going up on there. It's just, I'm taking a small break from it for now because it's just, just not working out for me at the moment. So overall, I'm finding it so much more easier to keep consistent income coming in working as a teacher and as a virtual assistant because they're longer term contracts and I'm guaranteed pay each month and I know exactly how many hours I'm gonna be doing and I'm getting paid for the hours I'm doing. On Upwork, it just wasn't consistent enough, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna keep going back to it. I'll probably still keep searching for jobs here and there. And if I see something that really catches my eye that I really think I'd love to do and would be passionate about, I would absolutely apply for something on there again. Um, I'm just now in a situation where I can be a bit more picky. I'm not having to rely on it and I am able to take a little bit break from it and not stress myself out too much by applying for 40 jobs a day and not get any callbacks. I just thought it would be good for people to get a balanced, you know, a balanced video talking about some of the negatives. Obviously, there's negatives to everything you do. There's negatives to every single job, so I'm not saying it's all negative, these are just the negatives that I personally have come across. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed it and you think that other people will benefit from it. I make videos three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and in about a week and a half I am moving abroad and I am travelling full time for over three years. So join me on this journey and see whether I fail or succeed, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video, bye.